Well, good morning and welcome to Morning Mail. Today is Friday, December the 3rd, 2021. Good to be with you today. Closing out our week of Morning Mail devotionals. It's just an exciting uh, message that we have today. Looking at a continuation, basically, of yesterday. As we look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Before we get into that, though, let's begin with prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for the day and its blessings, for your watching over and being with us. The time this morning that we can come together and open your word. May it bless us in our endeavors. May it encourage us and uplift us, strengthen us for the tasks that lie ahead. Thank you so much for Jesus, for the Bible. For the sacrifice that Jesus made, that we might be forgiven of our sins. Be with those that are dealing with surgery, recovering, anticipating surgery, those that are undergoing treatment for disease of COVID or cancer or whatever it might be. Just help us all, Father, to look to you for guidance and instruction through your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, we are looking at Paul's reminder to the Colossian Christians and to us of what Jesus, the image of God, has done for us in reconciling us to God through his death on the cross. Yesterday, we saw Paul's reminder of the state of our rebellion and the fact that Jesus is the source of our reconciliation. <clears throat> that was from Colossians 1, verses 21 and 22. Let's reread those verses this morning before we uh, consider verse 23. Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. And although you were formally alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Now in the next verse, verse 23, Paul mentions the stipulation of our reconciliation. Paul says, this reconciliation to God is ours, quote, if indeed you continue in the faith, firmly established and steadfast, and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister, end quote. Our final presentation to God at the end of time as people who are free from accusation and condemnation does not happen automatically. As we become Christians, we did not step onto a spiritual escalator that will automatically usher us into heaven at the end. Nothing is automatic about the Christian life. Nothing is inevitable about being fully and finally saved. There is a condition, a stipulation, Paul says. We must continue in our faith, not giving up on the hope held out in the gospel. The idea that once you believe you are saved forever is not the gospel. That is found nowhere in the Bible. The gospel is that God has provided for your reconciliation to him through Calvary. That restoration of relationship to your creator is a divine gift. But you must continually claim it. 
Salvation is not a one-time experience. It is the result of a lifetime of decisions to put your trust in Jesus and not yourself. At Colossae, the Christians were being encouraged to accept a religious system that did not make Jesus the sole source of reconciliation to God or of eternal life. The false teachers said that Jesus is only one of many steps to be taken to return to God the Father. Paul said they were wrong. What else did what uh, what Jesus did at Calvary is all we need. We need no one or no thing else to bring us into full relationship with God. Our hope is in the cross of Jesus. Period. That is why Paul exhorted these Christians to hold on to the hope that is held out in the gospel. Now we need to hear this exhortation ourselves. How many of us began the Christian life by grace, but are trying to make heaven by perfectly keeping law? Some have decided that reaching heaven depends on being perfectly obedient. Some teach that we are now under a new law that must be flawlessly kept, being saved just as the Israelites had to keep the law of Moses to be saved. That is false teaching. That makes my hope on Judgment Day my perfect obedience, not the work of Jesus at the cross. Authentic Christians live a transformed life. We are no longer enemies of God in our minds. We, are no, we no longer participate in evil behavior. Instead, we live lives marked by holiness and godliness. That transformed lifestyle is not the basis of our hope before God, however. The only reason we can have hope of heaven is because Jesus took care of our sin problem at Calvary, making re reconciliation possible by his physical body through death. Sometimes we sing a song that in the words say, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Where is your confidence? What is the basis of your hope for eternal life? Is it in your obedience? Is it in some set of laws or teachings that you think you can keep perfectly? Or is your hope in what Jesus has done for you? If your confidence is in Jesus, you can know that God has reconciled you to himself. If your hope is in anything other than the life and death of Jesus, you will live your life in uncertainty and die with your hope in a doctrine or a practice that cannot save you. Now, we're a little shorter today, but I wanted to spend a little time on this to this morning. And I want to close with a passionate passage of Scripture written by the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to read verses 17 through 20. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 through 20. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. On Monday, our morning mail will continue looking at Colossians 1 and beginning in verse 24. I look forward to seeing you then and being with you to continue sharing messages from the book of Colossians. Before we close this morning with prayer, let me remind you about Sunday. On Sunday morning at 9.30, our Bible classes will meet here at the building of the Central Church of Christ in Hereford, Texas. Dale Hollingsworth is teaching the auditorium class of the four adults. Very fascinating subject as he looks at what little the Bible tells us about angels. At 10.30, our worship service will begin with song and prayer, with observance of the Lord's Supper, the communion, and the sermon. The sermon continues from the series that we're doing on the book of James, Self-Help for Living, Living by Faith. And today, or Sunday rather, our lesson will be from James chapter 2, verses 14 to 26, a lesson entitled, Faith Works. Then at 6 o'clock, we finished our series on uh, the life of David. So to close out the year, I'm just going to be doing some different things in anticipation of a series that I plan to begin in mid-January. And I'll be sharing more with you about that as, as we get closer. But this Sunday at 6 o'clock, our worship begins here in the auditorium. And the lesson is entitled, Find Your Greatness. The text is Matthew 28, verses 20 to 28. Excuse me, Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. Look forward to sharing that message with you. I'm always sharing with you from God's Word. I appreciate you taking time to be with us each weekday morning or whatever time during the day or week that you're able to, to join in with us. And I look forward to being with you on Sunday. Let's close our service, or, or rather our uh, Devo this morning, with a prayer. Father, we're so grateful for all you do for us, for your blessing us and being with us. And Father, the greatest blessing of all is that your son Jesus came to this earth, lived a sinless life, laid down his life and died for us. But then he took that life up again as he was raised from the dead, and that he is now seated at your right hand as our intercessor. Father, may we put our faith and trust in Jesus and what he has done, knowing that it is the only, only way that we could be reconciled to you and that he freely chose to make this sacrifice for us. May our strength come from that, faith in Jesus, trusting him, trusting his blood, trusting his sacrifice. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, as I said, we're short today, but that's uh, where we're going to stop. And we'll look forward to being back with you on Monday. Have a good Friday and a good weekend. And we'll see you Sunday and Monday.